Besides, if you are hoping they can keep that streak going. Um, that's me. I go by Aggie. I'll be talking to you about uh, mapping your active, uh, external, uh, external attack surface today. Get my words out. Uh, here's a high level overview. Um, I do have two main goals for this presentation. Uh, I want to give you tangible ways you can gain visibility into mapping your attack surface so you know what assets um, are visible to attackers. Uh, and I also want you to be able to answer that dreaded question. You know, if you come into work this, that morning and your boss, manager, VP rolls by your desk and say, hey, I saw this in the news. Are we vulnerable to insert your latest headline there? Uh, but I'll set the stage. We'll do some baselining. I'll go through some use cases. Uh, I will mention a lot of tools and resources. I have a QR code slide at the very end, so you don't need to frantically write down anything. Um, that's going to be at the end for you all to, to uh, scan. So about me, uh, I did spend some time as an intelligence analyst in the Air Force. I'm currently working as a senior threat analyst. The most important thing you should know about me is I am that guy. I am a crazy dog dad. This is Obi. Uh, he's our furriest child, um, and we have created a monster. The views, opinions, and uh, expressions that I have in this presentation are mine uh, alone and do not necessarily reflect the position or policies of my employer. So before I get into the so what, um, I want to define a tax service real quick. For this presentation, a tax service uh, can mean anything that is publicly accessible to an attacker. Right? That's a lot of things. Uh, that is remote access devices like VPNs, that's your websites, web applications. Uh, it could also mean IoT or operational technology type things, and it could also mean social media uh, profiles. For this presentation though, I'm gonna focus on those remote access devices and like the websites and things like that. I won't really get into IoT, um, which goes into SCADA and things like that, or social media profiles. So the so what? So I just mentioned I was in the uh, Air Force for a long time, and I think anywhere you get a lot of briefings. And I always find myself sitting where you're at, like, so what? Does this change what I do first thing in the morning? Does it change anywhere in the middle? Does it change at the end? Like, why am I listening? Uh, so ransomware uh, threat actors last year, this is a conservative number, uh, earned about $1 billion. I've seen reports up to 1.3. So if they weren't well financed before, they definitely are now. Uh, October last year, I think it was like mid-October, I might have my dates a little wrong, but Secret to Speed came out. This is really dangerous. Um, it bypassed all your technical controls, right? So if you had to log in and then you had a two-factor authentication behind that, bypassed it, right? It was able to leak a session cookie. Uh, that session cookie, session cookie to be the in a browser, and that threat actor had that user's permissions in whatever application that they were doing, right? So, uh, that was really, really bad. It was about 20,000 devices when it first came out. Um, rolled into the new year, uh, Avanti, I think they're still having a really bad year. I think this is the, the first part of January. Um, they've had numerous uh, critical vulnerabilities since then. But it's about 22,000 devices, and we saw mass exploitation within, within days as well. And these are both uh, edge devices. Uh, so attackers are going to use these tools that I'm going to talk about today. So quick show of hands, who's used DNS dumpster at all? What about Shodan? More Shodan. And Census? Okay, cool. Uh, so these are the three tools I'll talk about today. There are many others. These are the three that I chose for this presentation. Um, so if you, when you use these tools, attackers can use these tools as well. What can they see? You're going to see the same thing. Uh, so know your attack surface. The goal is to reduce that attack surface to just business critical needs. Uh, and then detection is a must after that, and then prevention if you can. So this scenario, this goes into setting the stage. Spoiler alert, it's just worst case scenario, right? You don't have anything. You're starting with nothing. Uh, you're the lone wolf. Maybe if you're lucky, you get a, a partner in crime to help you with doing this, but um, the point of this presentation is you can start with nothing and you can just be yourself. You're gonna find a lot of information quickly, uh, but to actually run it to ground, it's gonna take a lot of time, and we'll talk about that. So yeah, you don't have any IP addresses, you don't have any domain names, you know, where do you start? And we'll answer that question here in a second. No problem. Um, I don't think I'm unique in this, but sometimes when I get really large tasks, I overcome with that paralysis, right? Like, where do I start? Maybe there's multiple places I could start, which one's the best, right? Where do I go? So 
I'll give you a place to start. Uh, you're going to baseline your attack surface at almost no cost. All of the tools I'm going to talk about today all have a free tier. Um, Shodan that I'm going to show today, I paid the one time $50 membership, which is almost unheard of nowadays, right? That, not $50 a month, like one time, and that's it. That's all I get to do. Uh, so you're going to reduce the risk for your company and you're going to show immediate value. But again, to get it fully completed and get a good baseline that you can use on a reoccurring basis, it's going to take some time. So where do you start? Uh, ask yourself a question. Does your company have a website? For the purposes of this presentation, I'm going to use bestbuy.com. I could have chose any company in the world, right? But we're going to use bestbuy.com. So the tools, uh, like I said, just took a little quick poll. We're going to talk about DNS Dumpster. For those that have never viewed or looked at DNS Dumpster, uh, it just performs DNS uh, numeration, right? So you're going to put in bestbuy.com, and you're going to find all the other www.bestbuy.com, uh, QA. Bestbuy.com, all those subdomains. Uh, and you're going to get a lot of records and IP, uh, IPs associated with that. You're also going to find the hosting providers that your company uses. Um, it's going to show you some things about mail. And then we're going to take that information, we're going to put it into Shodan. Uh, the best way to explain Shodan is it, it's just going to show you information on internet connected devices. Right? And that's why I kind of narrowed the scope to um, websites, web applications, and remote access devices. You can see IoT things in there. Uh, but we're not going to cover that. Shodan will also give you reports and histories about um, your organization and certain assets. Then we're going to move to census. Uh, again, same thing as Shodan. They're very similar in the output and the things you can see, internet connected devices. Um, I'm in a very trust but verify mindset. It kind of goes back to that Intel portion. I don't want just one tool to tell me something and I take it as gospel. Uh, I want to trust that tool, but I want to verify with other things, right? Is it, are these other tools showing me the same thing? And you, you can use it to verify and enrich those findings as well. Um, so this is a quick visual workflow. This is what worked well for me. Um, you can use this in your own organization, and then you can mold this uh, work, uh, workflow to what suits best for you. But we'll start with DNS Dumpster. Uh, you can enumerate those subdomains, and then you're going to export those results. Taking that information, you can throw it into Shodan, where you're going to verify the findings from the DNS dumpster. Again, going back to that trust but verify mentality, you'll probably find new pivot points, uh, and you're going to export those results. So what you're going to find, what, we, what I found, was that you might have this mini workflow going back between DNS dumpster and Shodan, depending on uh, what you find about your organization. But at some point, you're going to get a really good visibility in what your company has, and then you're going to move from Shodan, and then we can put that information into census, which then, again, verify my findings that the other two tools have shown me, um, and maybe discover new pivot points that then I can go back to DNS Dumpster or Shodan, depending on what I need to find, um, again, to verify those, those results. So that's a quick visual workflow. So I had a challenge when I was making this slide. Um, I was going to take websites, and I'm trying to make them static, because I learned a long, long time ago if you don't have to do anything live, don't, because the pre presentation gods will feast on your tears. So I'm going to take a website that you can you know, navigate uh, actively and make them into static uh, slides. I did go from top to down, or top to bottom. Uh, so this should, that should follow the DNS dumpster. And I haven't checked it in a little bit, but I don't think they've changed your website. <coughs> Excuse me. I do have up here in the top right a, a, a little yellow ticker. And I'm going to use that because we started with nothing. We just asked ourselves, do we have a website? Yes. And then at the end of each tool, we're going to walk through and show you, like, hey, we just found all this information. And when I was putting this together, it was probably about four to six hours-ish of work, right? So you're going to find almost immediate value. Uh, but we'll talk about why it takes so long to run it to ground. So this is the top of DNS dumpster. Um, up here, you can just throw in whatever organization you want in Best Buy. Down here, it shows you the hosting providers. And this is important, right? So for bestbuy.com, um, this bar right here is what's hosted on you know, Best Buy's IP space, right? What they own. They also have uh, Salesforce. They also have Akamai, things like that. And that's important because if you come into work in the morning and you're sitting down having your cup of coffee and you're reading some security articles and you see Salesforce is hit with a DDoS attack. Well, if you don't know you're using Salesforce, you might just blow past that article. But now that you know that you're using it, we're like, wow, well, maybe part of our network is having problems. Maybe part of it's down. 
Um, and at the end of this DNS dumpster tool slide, you're going to see exactly what assets you have within each hosting provider. But the first step is knowing what you're using. So as you scroll down through the slide, or the, web, the website, the next section you're going to go to is the DNS servers, right? Who are you using to do name resolution for your um, company? Same thing with knowing who your hosting providers are. Know who's doing the name resolution for your company, because if those companies have a problem, um, people can't visit your sites, and it has like this domino cascading effect. Uh, and then at the bottom, uh, the MX records, this is where your mail goes to. Uh, it looks like uh, Best Buy uses Proofpoint. So again, same thing, right? You see an article that Proofpoint is being acquired, merged, DDoS, breach. Um, if you didn't know you're using Proofpoint for anything, it might just blow by. But now that you know that you were using it for mail, um, you can go and say, oh, help desk. Has anyone reported problems with receiving or sending mail? Um, things like that. Next section are text records. Text records are um, metadata that can be added to DNS records that don't affect name resolution, right? It's just like, kind of like amplifying data. And one of the things it calls out here in the DNS dumpster is you can look at the sender policy framework for additional information. High level is sender policy framework is a part of this presentation. It's just a way for companies to combat spam. And I, I highlighted down here um, two class C's, right? So we started with nothing. We asked ourselves, do we have a company website? Yes. And within maybe a minute or two, we have two class C subnets that we already know that um, belong to us or we use in some form or fashion. So we can have those things down as well. OK, I'm going to go to my more suits and arrows first, and then I'll go back up. So if you, I encourage you, as you go through any tool, um, to really review, understand, and investigate what the output of the tool is telling you. But for whatever reason, you don't have time. Like, I'm late to a meeting, you know, I'm just going to you know, run this real quick. If you do nothing else on the NS dumpster, you're going to click those two buttons that all my, my errors are going to. Uh, you're going to download a CSV file of all this information so you can review it later. And Excel is an analyst's best tool. Uh, and then we're, you're going to see a graph. And that graph is really cool for a couple of reasons we're talking about. So you're going to click those two buttons. Uh, but now let's go up to the top. So after the text records, you're going to find um, all your host records or A records of your company, right? This is what we're talking about where you're going to enumerate your uh, organization. So we're going to take bestbuy.com, and up here we have QA4, and then for that it's Fabric Dash Internal, right? Uh, so QA, I don't know anything about Best Buy, but I'm just going to assume QA stands for quality assurance. I need to be sure about that. I'll go investigate. Um, but then I was like, well, Fabric, that's a weird name. So I did a little research. That ends up being a Python library for unit tests, right? So you can find out a lot about an organization uh, and decipher the business just on their naming uh, conventions. Um, I'm guessing that if I scrolled up, I'd like to see a QA3. And if we got more than 100 records, I'll talk about the cap here in a second. There might be a QA5, right? Um, and it has the IP addresses for each one, right? So you're going to find out a lot of information about your organization. Maybe you're new and you don't know how the business is set up. This is a great way to kind of decipher that business. How do they, how do they name things um, and, and things like that. So because it's a free tool, and this is free in the truest sense, uh, a lot of free tools nowadays, they ask you to sign up, right? You have to give them your information and things like that, and then you get spam. Um, so this is free in the truest sense, where you just go to the website, and you start putting in domain, and boom, you get information, right? But like with any free tool, there's going to be some limitations. This limitation, you're going to get a cap uh, of 100 A records. And it even tells you you want to get the full report of 703. So one of the things that I saw this that I would immediately do is go back to my boss and say, hey, boss, I know you're, you're sticking me on this project. Uh, I don't have any resources. I don't have any budget. I'm telling you right now, I'm using these free tools. I'm getting one-seventh of our attack surface, kind of, right? So um, I think one thing that I wish someone would have told me a long time ago is in security, whether you're just starting out or whether you're a veteran is, we need to do better about building our business cases, right? A lot of times we just get sick on a project um, and we run into these hurdles. And in our nature, we just figure it out, right? we overcome them. Uh, but we could use resources, right? Uh, more people, uh, more money. Um, things like this you can stick in your back pocket and say, hey, you know, we, with the resources that we were given, which is nothing, um, this is what we're getting. All right, so the network graph. Don't worry, I have a zoomed in view of this, right? But um, taking the very first slide uh, where you had the, the hosting providers, 
That's what are up here on these little things. I know you guys can't see them, right? This is Salesforce, this is Best Buy. That's what I was talking about. You'll be able to find which assets are under which hosting provider. So going back to that scenario where you saw an article that says, you know, Salesforce is getting DDoS, you know these assets might be affected, right? And I think these are a lot of MTAs, so probably mail transfer agents. Um, so again, you might want to ring the alarm bells on your messaging team or whoever handles email, see if everything's working appropriately. Um, but I'll zoom into the next one, right? So I picked this section specifically because uh, there was one little orange uh, rectangle. And I was like, well, what is this? DNS Dumpster can help you identify technologies that your company is using too that you don't maybe know that you're using. So in this particular one, uh, DNS Dumpster is saying that, hey, you have a SharePoint site, something, hanging off of this uh, asset called VPN MN2. Um, these are some of the questions that you need to start writing down so you can answer. Hey, uh, X system owner or X team, um, this is the asset in question, is VPN. Uh, you can verify it too. Maybe you know the IP address of that SharePoint site, you can browse to it. Do you know that there's SharePoint hanging off of this? Is it supposed to be exposed? Things like that, right? Because our goal, again, is to reduce that attack surface. Uh, detect is a must, prevent is the goal. So let's update our ticket real quick. So, <coughs> excuse me, we just used DNS dumpster. Right off the bat, we got 108 records because we get we hit the cap. There's another tool I'll mention right now. It's it's in that QR code resources at the end uh, called Subfinder through Project Discovery. It's command line, which is why I didn't choose to do it here. I've sat where you guys are at and I've seen command line tools. Unless you're like really invested in command line tools, you, you go cross-site and it doesn't really, it's not really interesting. Um, but they don't have that 100 cap limitation, so you can use other tools. We got eight name servers that are, are used by our company, uh, seven hosting providers. I don't know why I'm looking up there, I have it right here. Uh, two mail servers. Uh, we got one cool external network map. Another thing you can do with that external network map is if you work in a, a place that has one of those really big printers, you could print it out, like stick it on your wall, and then when your boss comes by, it's like, hey, How's this going? You're like pointing to this. You know, you're like, oh my god, box. Look at this. We're doing you put like little pins and stuff in there. Um, I'm not gonna say I've done that, but uh, and then it's really easy to, to download that spreadsheet, right? So you have that offline because that's really what is gonna help you do this analysis, right? We're looking at a website. Yeah, it's cool. Maybe you want to do it just to, to check to see if certain things are still on there. If you de uh, decommission an asset and it's not supposed to be there anymore, you can use these free tools as a verification step, right? This isn't supposed to be there. DNS still shows it's there. I don't know what kind of uh, cadence that DNS dumpster goes and refreshes things, but um, it could be used as a verification. So moving on to Shodan. I think more people use Shodan here. Um, again, this has worked well for me. You can adjust it to work well for your, your needs. Cast a wide net. Um, excuse me. Shodan has specific tags you can use to show very specific things. If you're just starting out, uh, I would advise not to. Um, cast a wide net. In this case, I just used uh, Best Buy. I didn't even use the org tag or anything like that. Um, and then just a, a word workflow is investigate, validate, and enumerate. And you're gonna kind of go through that cycle. So this is what Shodan looks like if no one's seen it before. So I just plugged in uh, Best Buy, you see there's 135 assets. Um, Best Buy, or Shodan does have view report, download results, and historical trends uh, toward the end of this section. You'll get to see what those look like. But the reason I say cast a wide net is, you might see something that you're just not familiar with. And in this case, I ran across something. I'm familiar with Akamai, but this Akamai uh, ghost or G-host, I was like, ah, that's new. I'm going to click on that and see what it is, right? This is a chance to decipher your business again, like I said before. Well, that was a gold mine, actually, uh, because it gave me 14 new domains that Best Buy owns that I didn't have before, right? So we started with Best Buy, so I scratched that one out. I don't really care about Akamai Technologies because that's a different company. But all these other ones, I was like, ah, that makes sense. I go to Best Buy, geeksplot.com, that makes sense that they would own that. Um, DT Deals. They do own it, spoiler alert, but at first I was like, uh, I don't know if this one really goes with it. But then you can see like Best Buy, the abbreviated Best Buy, ex uh, external gateway, things like that. So that's where, if you remember that visual workflow, you might find yourself going from 
one root domain, you go to Shodan, you might find 14 other domains, you go back to DNS dumpster, you throw all these back into DNS dumpster, now you're gonna get however many subdomains are underneath that. So you'll find yourself, probably, at least I did, going back between those two tools, and then you're gonna get a much wider uh, attack surface for your company. So this is the report tab that I mentioned uh, a minute ago. Um, it'll show you all the open ports, uh, web technologies, products that you use. I suggest you take these down too, however you want to take them down. Uh, Shodan does have a download, so we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, same thing with the hosting providers, right? As you see the products like, uh, it's probably hard to read, but that's Cisco ASN VPN. Um, anyone from there ever heard of Arcane Door? It just happened months ago okay, one percent. okay so there was an attack against Cisco VPN appliances right was, the campaign was called arcane door so you want to make sure you know these products because if you don't know you're using Cisco VPN and you see a security article that mentions hey these things are getting popped you'll blow, you'll blow right past it right so you'll need to make sure you know the products that you're using also the web technology web technology is a big one too down here um, I'll pick that and chase rum because it has the word rum in it, but if you see uh, another article that has a vulnerability in that um, web technology, you're going to want to know that you're using it. So an added benefit of using Shodan is it'll, it'll tell you and give you a historical graph, graph of your attack surface and you want that trend line to go down, right? Remember from one of the goals, you want to reduce your attack surface to business critical needs. Um, so re reduction, that first point, and then once you've met that goal, um, you want to detect everything that's a must and then prevent if you can. So updating our ticker, we found 14 new domains that we're gonna run back through DNS dumpster. I just did two, I'm not gonna go through all 14 and you know, have everyone sleep in this audience. Um, 12 web technologies, so I went ahead and did the, the more, hit the, the more button on each one of those sections. Oh, I didn't want to blow past that yet. So that's what we got from, from uh, Shodan. So talking about the download, it's not as easy to download your or export your results uh, from Shodan as it is from DNS Dumpster. On the web GUI, by default, you're gonna get a JSON, uh, press JSON format. Maybe your tools use that. Uh, I know I like everything in just like Excel, CSV kind of format. Um, so in this case, there is a command line version of Shodan. You'll have to get you know, uh, a Linux box. I don't think it runs on Windows. Um, download that package, pretty straightforward. Uh, it's pretty straightforward to use. You're gonna use that Shodan converter command, and then I actually have in yellow the actual command you would use, um, just substituting out whatever file that you download, right? Um, and then you can convert it to CSV. So not as straightforward, not as simple, but you can still do it. So census. So, uh, kind of fast forward, we took all those 14 domains, we've kind of gone back through, we've gotten a, a much wider visibility into our tax surface. Um, what I like using census for is that trust but verify kind of mentality. We have all this information. Let me go back to census. Are you going to tell me the same thing? And sometimes you'll get new pivot points, right? That's going to lead new investigations, which kind of goes back into it's going to take a long time for you to run this to ground completely. Um, so again, I have some Homer Simpson things that I've pointed out. Uh, it'll tell you, it'll call out specifically login pages. So I thought that was really interesting. When I ever see login pages, pages I want to see, you know, the questions in my head are, does it have MFA enabled? Do we have detection if someone's trying to brute force type of things? Um, it'll show you vendors, software vendors again, so you can compare that to the list that you've seen from Shodan. Um, ASNs, as you go through and, and enumerate your company's attack surface, you're gonna see ASNs, think of it like neighborhoods for the internet. You're, you're gonna see very common ASNs. And so that's why I, uh, I threw up here. I just use this autonomous system number, this 15 or 11596. Um, you're gonna see common ones. And if you see some, something that isn't that common one, then, then you can go and, uh, and investigate that, see what we're using that, that neighborhood for. Um, but it also tagged devices as well. Um, like here, it shows another VPN. So we can enrich and validate findings. Um, the DT deals domain that we saw on DNS, DNS dumpster, I took that one and I wanted to find out if that's why I really own that. Um, they do. So what you can do is from census, here's all the DNS records for that uh, DTDeals.com. Um, it gives you the software technology as well. 
And I verified it with, with DNS dumpster. Um, yes, the same asset uses cold fusion, kind of like that. I was really interested in those login pages. Um, so I clicked on one, this is, it'll take you to the login page. Um, so again, if you're in the security area, the questions you should be asking are, um, do we have detection? If someone's trying to brute force this login page, can we detect it, right? Can we whack that IP or take some action? Um, if, you if you put in a username and password, am I prompted for multi-factor authentication? I don't know. I don't know what uh, DTMS is, but I would research that. Is it a third-party vendor? Is, are there known vulnerabilities out there in the CVE world? And it is, it's a, that's why for DT deals, it's like deal tree, I think is what it breaks out to be. It's a secondary market. So they, you know, they do own it, they've, they've branded it right now. So we'll recap really quick so far. So let me just go through these piece. Okay, so we started with nothing. Uh, I'm not gonna go and read every single one, but we got a lot of information. Like I said, it probably took me four to six hours to, to do this because I was actually looking at certain things like the Akamai uh, G host. I didn't know what that was. I want to investigate it. I encourage you to do the same if you're doing this for your company. Uh, something you're familiar with the technology, uh, go research it, learn it. Uh, that's why I like technology and security because you, you never know enough. I may have four spreadsheets. So I, I kind of skipped this. Um, I did take Geek Squad and DT Deals and I ran those two root domains through DNS dumpster. And between those two, it gave me another 67 subdomains. So if you kind of take that average and say, okay, well, there's 12 more root domains, you can kind of see how much the sprawl is really quick. And that's why I said it's gonna take you a long time to, to run this to ground. Um, but then you're gonna have four spreadsheets, right? You're gonna have three from DNS dumpster and then one from Shodan. Uh, and hopefully you'll combine them all into one and you can start you know, doing all the things that Excel allows you to do, uh, analysis and data um, comparison and filtering. <coughs> Uh, and then we have one really cool network map that we printed out. So one, one more time, this is a, a workflow that worked well for me. Uh, it, you have initial thing, you're gonna investigate it, you're gonna validate that thing. That thing will probably give you new things and you're gonna enumerate that and then you're gonna pivot off those new things. So that's what you'll find yourself uh, doing a lot. And that's, this is what's gonna take a lot of time. If you are a lone wolf doing this, or if you have a partner in crime, this probably isn't gonna be your like full-time job. You probably have other duties. If you're in a SOC, you're probably gonna be working at notables and tickets and things like that. Um, so it's gonna take a real long time, however much time you can carve out to, to finish this. All right, so let's say it took you a couple weeks, maybe a couple months. You have this really great baseline. Well, well now what? Um, you need to communicate up those findings to management, right? They need to know that, hey, there's things on here that need to be either decommed properly or these remote access devices, again, in the last year have really been hit hard, right? Uh, Fortinet, Avanti, Cisco, uh, Checkpoint, I think is one of them. Depending on your org, uh, you might work in the SOC or like a threat hunt team, so you might just uh, communicate those to other team members, but if you're in a, like a, a threat intel cell or something like that, you need to communicate these findings to other security teams, so horizontally as well as vertically. So if, if anyone caught uh, Caden's talk, it was a couple, couple talks ago, uh, soft skills are needed here in security, right? You have to talk to people. As much as I just wanna sit behind my computer and press buttons, um, in security, you are, I wanna say rarely, ever the system owners of the things you're trying to protect. Other people are gonna be the ones that are actually gonna be do the patches and remediation, things like that. So I can't tell you 100% what will work when talking with these uh, other uh, offices. I can tell you what won't work. And what won't work is if you approach this as you're not doing your job, you're incompetent, you need to do this, blah, blah, blah. You're not gonna get anywhere with that, right? Approach it as a conversation, uh, approach it as a discovery um, process on your part. Hey so-and-so, messaging team, let's pick on the, the mail exchanges, right? I see that we have this, could you give me some more information about this? How does this work, you know? Build that rapport. Um, those soft skills are really, really important because once you <laughs> develop those, when stuff hits the fan and there's an emergency vulnerability that comes out, like you see a news report or something that says, hey, these Cisco devices or Citrix devices, you know, pick your flavor of the month. Um, if you're able to, you know, call or you know, message you know, that, that person if you have that rapport already built, um, you're gonna have their ear a lot quicker and that's, 
you want to have those conversations before breach rather than after, because after the breach sucks. So you might find that you, you care about 80 things or 100 things, right? If you only care about those 80 things, don't worry, don't waste your time with anything else, right? So what works really good is if you take those products, um, those software vendors, those web technologies, things like that, uh, put it into an RSS reader, make those fields and, and filter them. I only want you to tell me if something happens with the things I care about. If I have time, I'll read about other things. Um, there's really good RSS readers out there. Uh, Feedly's a good, INO reader, uh, Blog Trotter. Uh, you can get those real-time alerts. I use Google, Google Alerts. Uh, you will have to tune those. Uh, you'll get blasted into eternity if you don't have the right ands and ors. Um, so caution, but those work really well as, uh, as well. So now we can answer the great question, right? You just come in, you get your cup of coffee, and your VP comes by your desk and says, hey, I saw X in the news. Well, not X, that was a bad thing, not Twitter. Uh, y, I saw, I saw Y in the news. Are we vulnerable to it, right? Check your baseline, right? You can really quickly get an answer to those. Better yet, if you come in just slightly earlier than your VP and you see Y in the news, you can already tell them that, hey, we're not affected by this, right? That's what they really want. Uh, they don't want to go to you, just ask them. If you can already tell them, you're gonna get a lot of brown points. All right, use cases. Um, so no surprise here, check your baseline, that's your first go-to. Your baseline is probably gonna tell you if you have the, or it is gonna tell you, not probably, it is gonna tell you that you have X to Y device. Um, that's the CVE for Citrix Bleed. Um, but amplifying your baseline with other collection sources uh, is really big, and we'll go through here. So Citrix Bleed, uh, mid-October last year. Uh, so I go to Mastodon a lot. I stay away from actual X uh, as much as I can. Um, he did some really good coverage, and in the QR code and the resources, I have uh, all the, the security researchers that I follow. Um, and like any good social media platform, once you plug in four or five, it's gonna give you some other suggestions based on those, right? So you can go from there. But uh, this is October 25th. I think it happened mid-October, around the 12th, 13th, somewhere around there. Um, Kevin Beaumont actually gives you like a Git request, which is a gold mine, right? Yes, we, we have it. Um, you immediately can take this Git request and give it over to your threat hunting team if you have that. Like, hey, is someone knocking on our door with this? Here's, here's an indication of compromise. Uh, a few days later, um, I will give him a shout out because I use Kevin a lot. So he has a, uh, I think it's on Medium, a blog, he writes doublepulsar.com. Double um, but the reason I have this in here is he points out there's a public exploit for this that uses a Python user agent. So like the last slide, you can head over to GitHub, find that public repo, grab that Python user agent, whatever that is, give that to your threat hunting team. Hey, if you see this, block it, right? This means that someone's trying to get in. Uh, this is the last one, this use case. So might be a little hard to see. Uh, he took it from his phone. He's using Shodan again. Um, I, ICBC, if anyone remembers the, the bank in China that got hit, you know, basically due to Citrix bleed. What he's showing here is, uh, yes, this is um, the ICBC bank. Down here he's showing, like, this is the date that I'm taking the screenshot. And down here is the last modified. The last modified is, I'm gonna say a good indicator. If something comes out today and the last modified was three months ago, you probably aren't patched. I'm not gonna say it's 100%, it's not definite, but it's a good indicator. That's what he's showing here is, this is, you know, the end, of, or this is actually the beginning of November, November 9th, for the, if you can't see it. Uh, the last modified was 19 August. So it's a good indicator that, hey, this wasn't patched, they probably got popped with Citrix. All right, so to kind of tie that back into the rest of my presentation is we moved, I went back to Shodan and I put in uh, the Best Buy org, and I just put in the title Citrix, you know, does, uh, does Best Buy use this? And they do. Um, you can get the uh, IP and you can get the host name and the same things that you know Kevin showed in his Mastodon post. You can get the, the, the date. You can see when I put the slides together around 10 February and it was last modified 25 Jan, right? So you can use this to not only answer the question for your bosses, but you can 
uh, go talk to the system owners and go, hey, I have a last, ma last modified device or last modified to date, you know, two months ago. It looks like it's not patched. You're the system owner. I'm going to trust your word more than mine, but it looks like we need to patch these, you know, whatever device. Second use case, Avanti Pulse Connect, those are the CVEs. Uh, same kind of walkthrough, check your baseline, uh, amplify it with other collection sources. I'm going to use Kevin Beaumont uh, again because he, he really followed this as well. Sometimes these security researchers just hand you stuff on a golden platter. So in this, in this case, he said, hey, here's a show data search. Here's the HTML tag. Here's the, the syntax you should, you should search for. And then combine it with SSL your org and org, you know, colon your org. And so sometimes you don't even have to figure out the syntax. You know, these, these researchers are really good and they'll give it to you. Uh, later that same day, he gave another uh, Shodan search. Uh, you can search for product, Pulse Secure, and then your org or your SSL to find your devices. <coughs> so that's what I did. I was like, all right, I'm going to see if Best Buy has Avanti products, right? So uh, negative on this first HTML, and then again for the, the product, right? So you can not only answer if you have this product, but then you can follow on answer, hey, it looks like we may need to patch. Like, do I need to sound the alarms? Do I need to talk to the system owners on this? So that's the end of my presentation. I have, uh, if you have comments and feedback, gripes, complaints, you can reach me at that email address. Um, and then here's the QR code I promised. So, but I'll take questions now if anyone has any. Yes, sir. In the Air Force, were you enlisted, commissioned, or GS? I was enlisted. I was going to make a follow on comment, but I refrained. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> one of my officers is in the room, so. <laughs> I worked for them. There's another uh, question here. Yes, sir. So it feels like you can automate the tax service just by starting with the domain. Yes. Yes, and you should work for that, right? But I should do very manual. You want to do that? You want to do it initially? But then after that, you want to go to the CLI for automation. Since this is an API, I would do that too. And I would use some finder to the DMS dumpster to automate that. Yes. I don't know how to start this. Show that also when you get to the YouTube. You can put it in your Thank you all. And it's helpful. And it'll attract you.